Well, welcome to Skagit Valley and Whidbey NMRA Clinic. This is our January 2022 clinic. Thanks to everybody for coming aboard. Um, tonight's uh, clinic, we have Cliff Akers going to be presenting a rail ferry system that he's made for his layout, the point to point layout, which is, should be pretty interesting. A lot of different features. I mean, it's not just a rail ferry model, it's got active feature on his layout to turn trains and cars and stuff around and it's servo controlled. So that should be interesting. So with that, Cliff, you're up. That is the prototype inspiration for my train ferry. It was uh, built by the Northern Pacific. It was built in New York. And at the time it arrived out here on the West Coast, it was the largest steam boat on the West Coast. It's 330 something feet long, a little over 70 wide. It has three tracks that run down the middle of it and it can carry an entire train. Once carried a train that was uh, Theodore Roosevelt was riding on. And he rode from Oregon up across the river up into Washington. It could carry 23 freight cars. It had two steam engines that had pistons that were three feet in diameter and he had an eight foot stroke. So it's a little bigger than the stuff we're used to talking about. I don't know what all those flags are. I'm assuming it was uh, probably when it was new and it had Washington and Oregon and who knows who all flags, Northern Pacific and Union Pacific, uh, they, they work together, I guess, but the Northern Pacific owned it. It was built in uh, New York. They disassembled it to ship it out here instead of driving it out here. And they disassembled it and put it on a, uh, a steamer and it was in 57,000 pieces and they brought it out here and reassembled it in Portland. It ran from 1884 to 1908. It's mostly just inspiration. I didn't follow it very closely when I was building my model because the model would have been five feet long. So I needed something. I, I've redid my layout and I have an end-to-end -end layout now. No circles. You just drive from one end to the other. One end has a uh, Kitwood Hill turntable. It's a Zoan 30, by the way. And the other end has this thing. The layout, it's all divided into dioramas by these uh, backdrops. Now over in the background there, you can see that lighthouse and a little bit of the train ferry. And you can see my, my trestle where it makes a U-turn here right in front. Back on the left, there's a, a yard. So here you can see the side of the layout where the thing actually lives. The far end, so it, it, it carries trains from my main road, which is... Uh, Salmon Bay Railroad Company, and it carries trains over to the exchange side over, over by the lighthouse there, as well as being a, a turntable, and it turns, uh, turns the trains and locomotives around. The servo in the middle there is the, the one that's used to turn that thing. You know, it's a big, heavy load for, for a servo. The little, the typical ones that we use for turnouts is that blue one there, and those things cost maybe a couple of bucks a piece. That bigger servo is a uh, 360 degree continuous rotation one. I think I paid 17 bucks for it. The thing on the right there is a RCA jack like you would use in a guitar. It's the, the contacts for the track. My sketch is what they call the thing that programs the Arduinos for this job. And I've posted that online and, and I have a link here for those who are interested. I'm not gonna go into this too much because uh, not everybody wants to do this. This is the the water deck, basically, that the ferry sits on. That thing there in the middle is a, a four-inch bearing race used for like a Lazy Susan or something of that sort. It has a cog belt that goes around the outside of it. And then the servo, you can see kind of on the, on the back side there, the little gear that sticks up. The cog belt is something that's used for uh, printers for scanners or 3D printers or stuff like that where they need precision. And then I put some PSA glue around the outside of that bearing race. PSA glue is uh, like what's on scotch tape. It's just sticky, but it's enough to do the job for this. And there's a little spring that pulls the uh, servo against it. And then this piece of uh, pointy plywood, it's three quarter inch plywood mounts on that bearing race. It's got a little skirt around there that gives it kind of a boat shape and see the model of the thing is sitting aside there so you can see the uh, what it is. There's two tracks that run up the middle of my model. You know, it's hard enough to do a turntable with one, never mind two. So they have to be exactly spaced at the end. So they're exactly identical 
to each other, each end. The whole thing has to rotate. Normally a turntable has wheels at each end. The weight of the turntable kind of rests on that so that the vertical alignment is handled by those wheels to line up with the, the tracks that lead in and out of the turntable. Well, this thing, everything's kind of floating in a way. It's not, it's not in water, obviously, but I made it so that the docks were a little bit higher than the deck of the boat and put some shims on there so that I could shim it up you know, little pieces of paper to get it so it's the right height and the same height at both ends with one dock and then you build the other dock. You know, an engineer would probably be able to explain this better. I worked my way through it. I would have like a pencil mounted above the, the uh, deck on the end and then I'd rotate the thing and I'd have to find so that it would be exactly the same length from the center line as you rotate it. So kind of like what you do when you make a curve in your layout, you'd have a a lot of people will have a, a stick that's mounted at one end and you move it you know, around with your pencil. And a lot of it was, I kind of made it as I went along, just like I'm describing. And so on the left there, you can see the little engine room compartments are quite a bit shorter than they are on the right because I had to move the wheels and the engine rooms and everything out. I didn't have enough room. I measured it, reality bites. You gotta, <laughs> once you actually put trains in there and you could see how they were gonna fit. Uh, I realized that it wouldn't be very workable. I got to be able to kind of get my hands in there a little bit. So I redid everything, raised up the, the pilot house. As you can see, mine only has one pilot house. The uh, prototype had one at each end, but there's a couple more pictures of it. You can see where I was working through the planning stages or I guess you could call it planning. It was more like uh, trial and error, but making the roof on that thing wasn't easy either. Some of that stuff, you th I thought that it wouldn't be too bad, but it was hard to do. And this is uh, planning the, the docks that come out to it. For those who don't know, those are uh, fast track sweepsticks, 24 inch radius. So that's, I use those a lot on my layout. I think I had at this point on the left side, you can see that I had already made the ferry deck so that it was it could pass any point evenly and not not snag or be too be have unevenness. And so then all I had to do was mount the mount the deck the docks and I replaced the uh, turnout eventually with a uh, a three way turnout. There's a picture of it mostly done. It's still not done, but I intend at some point in the future to have some kind of a motor mounted across the top of the pilings that will use chains to raise and lower the, uh, the ramp that leads onto the ferry. It won't really move, but it'll look like it will. Kind of mimic what we have for the uh, ferry docks around here. So the prototype, they had three rails that went down it, and they had a, a, a three-way stub switch on the ramp. Their, their ramp was pretty long. They used their locomotive to push the train onto the rails, onto the middle and one side, and then they'd use the third rail as a kind of a runaround on the ferry, and they'd drive the locomotive onto that. And then when they got to the other side, they could pull the locomotive right off. And there's a better picture of it. And you can see on the left side there, you can see I have three cars in there. Those are 18 foot Cohen 30 cars. The paddle wheels were 30 feet in diameter on the prototype. I've seen some, I was looking for a prototype that would be closer in size to what I was trying to make. I couldn't really find anything that, that fit what I was doing. I think that doing research on this stuff is kind of a skill all in its own. So all I have feeding power up in there is just track power. I put a bridge rectifier and a buck converter to uh, provide power for those lights. There's a uh, um, reverser circuit in, in one of the engine room compartments and they're held on with magnets. So these are pictures I took while I was making a little video or a couple little videos, which I'm gonna show you here in a minute, a couple of pictures there. Um, these are older because you can see some of the raw foam and stuff in there. So on the uh, on the turntable, I have two switches, one's fast speed and one's slow. And they're spring-loaded uh, center off toggle switches. And so it's uh, it's a little easier. I want I was originally I was going to try and make a, a servo that would, you know, servos when you uh, run these things for like for the uh, turnouts. You, you tell it to go to a position. And I thought, oh, well, I can use that for a turntable, but they're not precise enough, even the good ones. So 
But anyway, this one has two toggle switches. So there's a fast speed and a slow speed. And you know, you get it close with the fast speed and then adjust it a little tweak with the slow speed. And it's, it was pretty easy to line up. So there's a bigger picture of the uh, prototype. And then there is a view looking down on the deck. And you can see the, the locomotive on the right side there and some passenger, I guess, and some freight cars all at the same time. And then they got some kind of barrier they put up there on the, on the deck to keep the trains from rolling off, I guess. I used uh, fire escapes to try and make those ladders like they have going up. And that's looking down my deck. So I'm making a little video here to demonstrate some of the things you can do with this train ferry. And uh, so here's the first part of the maneuver. Here is the second part. It's kind of hard to do everything one handed here, but we'll see. Brought in two cars from the uh, from the inside world and swapped them with two from the outside. Turn the train ferry around and pick them up with the other train. All right, in this maneuver, I'm going to uh, turn my entire passenger train around, which admittedly is pretty short, only three cars. So, but anyway. We'll get it done pretty quick. As you can see, I'd already broken my train apart and, and ran around part of it. <laughs> Well, I had a bunch of trouble with my other locomotive, so I switched so I could finish doing this. I don't run that 440 very often, so I give it a little tune up. All right, well, that's, a, that's most of it. How do you turn it to the other end? Uh, I have a Kitwood Hills uh, uh, turntable. It's, it's a nice model, but it's just a it's a kit. By the way, the base of the ferry is made out of a door skin. It's plywood you get at the hardware store for refacing doors. It's pretty strong. It's pretty stable. Everything else is uh, regular model lumber. Is the deck of the ferry lumber? And the deck of the ferry is um, made with stir stick. Oh, okay. Now I'm starting to use them a lot. <laughs> You, got, you buy those by the gross, you always have a lot of them around. And just stain them sort of different colors. Right. Different, that good. particular uh, was um, India ink. Don't look good. What's the story on your backdrops and how come you're not using idler cars to access the ferry? Actually, I'm still kind of working out exactly how I am going to use the ferry, but that's a good idea. They didn't on the prototype. They had, but they did have a donkey engine that they kept around just for that job at each end. 
but yeah, that's a that's an idea that I could just uh, push a push stuff on there and not actually have the locomotive enter the ferry. I, if I'm understanding, I think I know what an either car is, right? It's kind of basically a flat car. Yeah, Chuck Ricketts used to have that feature on his layout for his ferry huh. uh, terminal. You had you couldn't put the loco on the ferry because he had a light. Well, it wasn't a ferry; it was a barge. It was a light barge. You had to use an idler car to put cars on and off of it. There's more to the story of with the uh, ferry, by the way. Um, after it got retired, uh, the Milwaukee Road bought it, and they took all the superstructure and the paddles and engines off of it and used it as a barge. And they brought it up here into Puget Sound, and they went back and forth between uh, Port Townsend and Seattle. In 1949, it got hit by a, a ship in Elliott Bay, and that's where it is now. And on the bottom of Elliott Bay, they apparently a bunch of the uh, box cars when it sunk. They floated away onto the shores of Elliott Bay <laughs> and they salvaged those, but some of them sank and they're down there still with it. The turntable of the, the ferry, it turns about 90 degrees. Uh, I turned it 90 degrees, but it's like a regular turntable. Does It'll, it turn, it does it connect two parts of the railway? Yes, sir. Railway? Yep, that's how it works. You know, most of the layout is all my, my road, Salmon Bay Railroad. I can justify having you know, other foreign cars on it. They came across the ferry, right? Yeah. That was a great presentation, Cliff. Yeah. It was very, very interesting and very Good. imaginative use of uh, available available techniques to make something quite unique, actually, I think, in the model railroading world. Good. Well, hey, you did a good job. Cliff, what's the story on your backdrops? Oh, sorry. I bought some of them are uh, paper things that I bought from train junkies. And some of it I painted the on the over on the uh, left side over by the yard are, are ones I actually painted. So everything is a diorama. All my, you know, like they're most of them are like five foot dioramas with a bunch of switching in them. There's no main line running on this thing at all. It's just too small. I figured I just basically have what we have on our shows. You know, we have modules where you have switching, right? and just leave out the in-between parts where you uh, have mainline running, so. How big's your room, Cliff? The room overall is, peninsula down the middle is 17 feet. Back of the room is, I think, about 15. It's it's kind of small for O and O scale, you know. I, like I say, I'm running small stuff. I'm running 18-foot boxcars and geared locomotives, everything's small, so it's like getting close to the size that HO would be. Okay, thanks again, Cliff.